Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another party prep video. If at any point you're watching this video and you like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I do party prep videos for all of my kids. I have four of them. I have a six-year-old, a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and Everly, which this birthday party is for, will be one um, today when you're watching this. So make sure you wish her a happy birthday. Um, so the first thing I like to do is I like to make my cakes the night before the party. Um, you know, just get that completely out of the way. Right now I'm actually making this cake two days before because I knew that I wanted to make my own frosting and put it in the fridge and let it set. Um, so I'm just putting in this parchment paper in the bottom of the pans just to make sure that the bottom doesn't stick. I'm not going to tell you the recipe that I used for the cake because it was disgusting, but luckily there was a lot more um, desserts that were that we were able to eat. And lucky for us, we they were all really, really good because Sweet Confetti made them and she's amazing. If you don't know who she is, you gotta follow her on Instagram. It's Sweet Confetti. She makes all kinds of delicious desserts, but she also puts up some really fun tutorials and everything like that but at least you can enjoy the cake making process it just wasn't very sweet and it was kind of dry when we are together you're afraid to hold my hand trying to understand what if this doesn't go as planned? So you don't know what it means to be loyal and kind. I know that you're not blind. Tell me what is really on your mind. So now that the cakes are done, I let them cool on the cooling rack for 10 minutes in the pan and then I will put them directly on the um, little cooling rack right here. While the cakes are cooling, I'm just trying to do anything that I can ahead of time. So right now I'm getting started on the goodie bags. I just want like a simple snowflake and call it a day. I actually really like how it looks. It's really pretty. I got the gold treat bags from Amazon. They were very inexpensive. So 
All right, so the goodie bags are done and now I am making this vanilla buttercream frosting. This is my second time making a frosting from butter and I'm 0 for 2. <laughs> At the consistency, just it, I can just never get it right. And I just wanna say this, it is absolutely fine to purchase your, you know, your box mix and your frosting that's already made in the container because that's just as good. Um, I just wound up trying this because I picked this up at Trader Joe's a while ago and I wanted to try it out thinking it would be Food Network worthy and it's just not. Um, so yeah, I'm going, I'm going back to my uh, store-bought icing in a can. So another thing is, you know, you can put this layer upside down and then, you know, flatten out every single layer by cutting off the top. I didn't do that, I just put them all on top of each other because I thought it looked nice like that. Um, and then I put our frosting all over and I'm gonna set it in the fridge after. Um, like I said, the frosting just was not easy to work with even though my cakes were cooled off, you know, the butter starts to melt and it's kinda just a disaster, but lucky for me, I was using fondant. Yes, I know, I say fondant, I'm from New Jersey, I try to correct myself and say fond fondant but it's just not, I just can't do it. It's really, really challenging. So I just say it how I say it. Guys, this cake took the life out of me. I know I can do some great cakes, but today was just like not one of them. I was really, really hard on myself about this. Beat myself up. You see that gap right there? That wouldn't have happened if I layered out, if I leveled out all the different layers, but it's all good. It wound up being pretty, um, and like I said, we had the other desserts. I wound up sticking these skewers in because of the layers, like, kept going all over the place, and that was helpful. Now I'm ready to say goodbye to this cake, putting it in the fridge until we are ready for our fondant. All right, so we are on to the next day. So I try to do the, you know, the hardest things first. And that for me is always the cake and the balloon arch. The balloon arch is not hard, you guys. It's actually very easy, but it's just very tedious. So I always like to encourage people to try their own balloon arch because I feel like it just adds so much to a party and just makes it look next level. And it's always beautiful for the backdrop, for pictures. I don't know. They're very also very affordable on Amazon. This one here, I see these one letters, and I asked um, somebody for a quote for to get the number one with balloons in it, and guess how much it was? It was $200. I almost passed out. So here I am with my cheap Amazon one, <laughs> making it myself, and it was, it was just not cute. It was a lot of work, um, and it just kept falling over, and it's very, very mediocre. I don't recommend. All right, like I said, I'm over that one. So now I'm doing these one boxes. These are really cute. They're very like flimsy and cheap from Amazon, but they still looked really cute on the table for the backdrop.
All right, so next we're just going to fill these up with balloons. I could have done that first, but I just wanted to see how it all looked together as well. But like I said, it was pretty and simple and looked really nice with the backdrop. Now this is another thing that I've always wanted, but again, I wouldn't recommend something to you that I don't think is worth the price. So this was very mediocre and I don't think it's worth the price. Also, what am I eating right now? Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, now that I'm done chewing on screen here, basically this is a glorified hula hoop with um, like you can put water in the base to make it stay up but again i don't think it was worth it if anything just go get a hula hoop from dollar tree and figure out a way for it to be held up because this just it was not worth the price i think it was it was over twenty dollars and like i said it really is just a glorified hula hoop and i was laughing while i was getting everything ready because i'm like how many different ways can i tell you that my daughter is one i have a one pinata a one balloon a one um, you know those little boxes that I just made so I don't know it was funny now we are starting on the balloon arch so you know I do have the one that connects to the table that makes like the the rainbow shape um, but I, lately I've been liking this one this tape that you stick the balloons through is literally like a dollar you can find it on Amazon and I just like it because you can kind of shape it yourself and I like to put it on that one spot near the stairs. Um, I do like the arch as well and I still have that and plan on using it in the future but right now I'm really liking this look. So the balloon kit came from Amazon and you know you don't have to do the colors the color blocked like that you can do you know mix all the colors up but I like them color blocked like that this backdrop is also from Amazon which is very affordable I always do a backdrop and a balloon arch just one of my go-to things I always ask you guys like do you want to see a video that is like shows you my process on how I party plan because I have a method if you haven't figured it out yet I'd love to share it with you. So next I'm just adding these little snowflakes. I got these, um, I think at Party City, and I just wanted to add them to the balloon arch to give it a little something extra. All right, so now we are back to our cake. We are getting started on the fondant and you'll see first the cake was white and then, I mean, first the cake was pink and then I did the cake white, but I just wanted to leave this in here to show you like why I didn't like it or I don't know, it kept breaking and then I didn't like how it looked on the pink plate. And again, just overthinking being perfectionist with this is not the way to be and it literally doesn't matter at all 
to Everly. I'm sure she loved, she would have loved anything, but I don't know why. I was like, this is my last baby's first birthday, and I was just being really extra with all of it. So anyway, I like to use um, parchment paper under fondant with, um, you can use powdered sugar, cornstarch, but you see, it's all good. I'm laying it on here, and then it just like ripped, and then I really just like did not like how it looked. It was pretty much a disaster, and I think I need a break from fondant. So after all that, I hated it. It ripped and it was just not, I didn't want to just settle. I wanted to try my best. So now I'm trying white. And this was a lot better. Good, not great. Um, our next birthday party that we're doing is January for Tanner's birthday. And he wants a Roblox birthday. So you guys have to send me all your Roblox ideas, not including fondant. So speaking of Tanner, when he was out at Target with Chris, he picked up this snowflake for me. He told me it would be perfect for Everly's birthday party, which I thought was so sweet and thoughtful. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe we can add like a pink snowflake over top of the crack and make it look better. And then I just hate it how it all looked. So you'll see me, I'm going to wind up taking the pink snowflakes off as well. So at first I left the one pink snowflake on to like patch up the spot that was breaking and then I wound up taking it off and making a white one and Chris looked at me, he was like, what are you doing? You are being too ridiculous with this cake. So anyway, um, I really liked how I wound up like wrapping the two colored fondants around the bottom and it was, it was, it was all good. Next time we're making a yummy cake, we're going for taste, not for looks.
Next up, we are just stuffing the pinata. Um, if you saw on Instagram, I have um, I had Everly's cake smash. I just did it at home by myself, and then I took the photos. The pinata was in the backdrop as well, so I thought that was nice to be able to use it for more than one thing. And since I didn't get like a big, um, like a big gold number one balloon like I normally do, and put up here, Chris is putting the pinata up here, and actually really liked how that looked. I thought that was a great idea. And now we're moving on to stuffing the treat bags. I just picked up a bunch of stuff from Five Below that I knew the kids would really like and it was perfect. Are your kids also obsessed with fidget toys? Mine are, but I don't mind it because I really like playing with them too. Next up, I am hanging up her monthly photo banner. I got this from Etsy. I got a couple of things from Etsy. I got her outfit from Etsy um, and another banner that you'll see me put together soon. But I tried to also support small businesses while also ordering things on Prime. So just being completely honest here, I am having a very hard time with my last baby turning one. Um, it's just, you know, it's a very, very bittersweet. So I was getting emotional hanging these up because I, and I'm going to get emotional right now just talking on here. So I'm going to stop talking for a second. I just want you to know that I didn't throw your stuff away. Before you make up your mind that I'm nowhere to find I'm standing right here I know that I told you we're over I swear that I'm sober Just listen, I miss you And I know that I said all these things But now when you're with her I can see that That you miss me I just stay Okay, now that all the banners are up, I'm hanging up some snowflakes. Chris is changing the light bulb for me that was out for a couple days now. These snowflakes that you see me putting on the lights here are from Dollar Tree. I thought that was a great find. That's why it's really nice to do this theme this time of year because you can find tons of like snowflake decor and things like that. Um, and then the other snowflakes hanging here are from Amazon. When we were at Five Below getting things for the treat bags, we found these and I thought they would be perfect for the party. Right, it is party day. I'm just wiping down the island. I was able to get myself ready. Um, that's 
something I learned was to try to get myself ready earlier because otherwise every time people come I'm upstairs getting ready so yes I'm just wiping everything down right now and then we're gonna set up some pretty tablecloths that I've used for you know I use them for ever oh my gosh not Everly I use them for Ella's uh, ballerina birthday I use them for Mother's Day I actually have a bin in the basement that is labeled pink and gold because it's so interchangeable and you can use it for so many different things Plus having two girls, you can add that to any birthday party. And these gold chargers I've had forever from my sister's baby shower that I threw her. So again, I just keep those in our um, gold and pink bin. These uh, chocolate bars were sent to me from Dazzled Chocolates, which was so sweet of her. She sent them all the way from Canada and she has her own business so make sure to check her out i'll have her link down below this e i got from party city and then this banner on her high chair i got from etsy Miss Evie, you can see she's so tired here, but she's checking out all of her party decorations. I actually wound up putting her down for a nap, and it never fails. I bet you guys can relate to this too, but anytime one of my babies has a birthday party, I say like babies as in kids that are still napping, they nap through half of their birthday party. It just always happens, whereas on non-birthday party days, you know, they take little naps, and Chris and I said we're just going to have to start telling them it's their birthday party for everything. My mother-in-law is here. As I'm setting up, you'll see some more family come in. I'm setting up all of our yummy treats from Sweet Confetti. We have some macaroons. We have chocolate-covered uh, gluten-free Oreos. And then these little cups were amazing. They are chocolate mousse with gluten-free Oreos on top. Some whipped cream and a straw. Um, and then I put some sprinkles on it as well. She is so sweet. Packaged everything up with instructions for me. And yeah, for birthday parties, you gotta do some things on your own and also get some help, do whatever you need to do to be able to enjoy your day and also do the birthday that you want. Um, Tanner was asking me if you could have one of those already, but there's also some dehydrated marshmallows on top too. I also forgot to mention that this was a brunch, so we had um, some food catered. We just did some waffles, eggs, bacon, bagels. This is our favorite thing to do because everybody loves this type of food, and it's nice to have a party around like 11 o'clock and still be able to have your night and do your bedtime routine as well. But I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you on Sunday. I upload every single Tuesday and Sunday, God willing, and let me know what videos you would like to see in the future, and don't forget to check out my party prep playlist. Christmas memories I've been working so much lately I can barely